All right, let's continue with our uh, data preparation phase, learning Azure ML Studio features to help with that. Uh, we're gonna, we, we've, as a reminder, we've learned how to pull data in, we've learned how to s reduce the data down to the relevant columns and rows or the features and uh, cases that we want. Uh, we've also learned how to handle outliers and missing data. Next, we're gonna learn how to transform data into the, the, the uh, a new form that'll be better for prediction later on in the modeling phase. So I'm going to call this, another word for it is, a term for it is feature engineering. And in, uh, in Azure, I've got three pills that help in particular with this phase. Not the only three, but the main ones I'm going to cover. So back here, I got rid of our clip uh, values. I kept summarized data that can be useful. And I'm sticking with the um, Lending Club uh, loan data. So what I want you to do next is grab the normalized data pill. What do we use normalized data for? Well, it's a little bit unnecessary actually in um, Azure because when we get to modeling, it's going to normalize data for us automatically um, at some points. So let me just show you what it refers to though. We've got five, I think, yeah, five different types of normalization we can use. Z-score is the most common. Uh, ton H scales it between a zero and one, and I believe Azure uses something like this by default. But let me just show you what it's gonna look like here. So normally our data that comes in, it, original scores, you can see loan amount, varies in the actual range of loan amount, um, income, annual income, yeah, rounded to the nearest thousand. Uh, let me show you what a Z-score does. We'll process this. So the idea behind a z-score is to convert everything um, to a standard scale. So like income ranges from zero to who knows how high, but it's going to be a very different scale than um, a number of job years on the job, which is going to scale from range from zero to thirty. Well, I can't really compare the those those two variables later on in the modeling phase um, very easily, at least if they're on different scales. Now to be clear, normalization isn't going to improve my prediction at all, the accuracy of the prediction, um, at least nothing, not significantly. Uh, all it does is it makes it possible for me to compare the importance of different features later on in the modeling phase, because it gets them to the same scale. So uh, let me visualize, show you what this looks like. So now um, it, it converted, we left, sorry, I should have shown, pointed this out. The selected columns, we said anything numeric. Uh, numeric transformations obviously don't apply to columns that aren't numeric. So uh, we use that rule, but we could also go in here by name. Like for example, we don't really need ID to be normalized. That's irrelevant. But uh, let me show you what this looks like. Uh, transform data set. So uh, loan amount, um, that's kind of irrelevant. Usually we do this to the independent variables, not the dependent variable. So let me give you an idea of like uh, income. Here we go. These that are negative, that means these people's annual income was below the average of this data set. Positive, it's above. Well, what is a 0.83 anyway? What it means is this person is 0.83 standard deviations above the mean. So three standard deviations away from the mean on e in either direction, whether it's below or above, that gets us I don't remember the exact number. What is it? 97-ish, 98% of the data set, or 99? Uh, most of the data set, basically. Anyone more or less than three standard deviations away from the mean is going to be our our outliers or people that are less common. And so we're not we're not going to see many of those here in my first 200. In fact, I don't see anyone. This one gets to 2.5, but I don't see any threes. But now the advantage is annual income is on the same scale as Let's find some other numeric variable that we care about. Debt to income ratio. So they're both scaled in terms of standard deviations, which means now when I use these variables to predict whether or not someone's going to pay off a loan later in the modeling phase, I can compare them and I can see which one has a bigger effect or smaller effect than the other. You may not understand what I'm talking about yet because we haven't gotten to that phase yet. But uh, for now, just trust me and let's not worry about it. However, I am going to tell you that I don't really worry about normalizing data in Azure ML Studio because it's going to do it for us automatically later on. But it's a common task and uh, we often do it, especially when we're writing, if, if we're not using Azure, if we're writing it directly from Python or R, we're going to have to go through the process of normalizing the data during this phase in data preparation. 
But I'm going to uh, I'll move it over here out of the way, and let's show you the next pill that's pretty useful. Uh, apply math operation. All right, here's what I want to show you on this one. First of all, let's pull it out here. This gets a little more useful, and I'll show you why. I kept summarized data here for a reason. You might remember a few videos ago, I talked about skewness and kurtosis, and I explained it, and we showed what it looks like. Back when we were summarizing the data and looking at it, exploring it, we would have done that during the data understanding phase. You might notice some variables that were well above or below the rule, the acceptable limit. 92.2 is way above. Remember, the valid limit is plus or minus 3. Anything above or below that is problematic. So what do we do? How do we solve or fix these variables that are so far outside the acceptable range? Like this one right here, 4,927, that's annual income. Well, there's certain predictive modeling algorithms like multiple linear regression, which depend on a normal distribution, which means that it can't, it, this is a violation. I can't use annual income as in its current form and trust my prediction because it doesn't have a normal distribution. Well, here's what I would do. I would identify those variables. Let's go back to our original data, visualize it, and see what the shape of annual income is. So right here, look at that, my histogram. I have one big bar, and the rest of them are, so, there's so few, it's a, it's a long, small tail out here. I have a few that are really high, but most of them are in this range of 50, 60, 70. Um, and that's why it looks the way it is. So what I need is a mathematical transformation that will maintain the scale or maintain the fact that 54,000 is less than 68,000, but can I transform it or scale it in such a way that the shape of this histogram will look more normal? Well, there is. So again, remember that the spread is generally like this. I need a mathematical transformation that will do the opposite, that will change it from going down here to increasing but with a negative increase. So it, it starts going up at a high rate and then slows down at a lower rate. What mathematical operator does that? Well that's the actual definition of natural log. So the natural log function says take data and on the smaller values as they increase make let them increase at a higher rate and when your values get higher have them increase at a lower rate. Let me sh let's do the operation and show you what it'll look like. So here in apply math operation, I'm going to say we want, uh, I think it falls under basic math function. There it is, ln means natural log. And look at all these. I've got tons of different mathematical uh, formulas or um, uh, uh, <laughs> calculations I can perform. And then I've got a bunch of different categories. I can do rounding. Do I always round up, round to the nearest whatever? trigonometric, op basic operators like add, multiply, divide. Uh, anyway, let's grab natural log. Let's get, for now, let's just grab the numeric, or sorry, the um, income filled natural log, or, or sorry, not uh, income, annual income right there. Okay, and this says, what do you want to do with it? Do you want us to return only the 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 result um, append means create a new column uh, and include all my original columns and add a new column where it's uh, where I've got the natural log version of, of um, income in place means eliminate the existing income co income column and replace it with the natural log version result only and I don't know why they default to this result only means don't allow any other columns to come through. Just apply the mathematical um, uh, formula. So let's do that one first. Oh, and actually what I meant to do is I want to grab another summarized data and pull it off of there so we can see how skewness and kurtosis changes. It's okay, we'll do that. Let's let this run, then we'll add that in there. Okay, so results, visualize. All right, here's the natural log of annual income. That's what it looks like. It, th those scales that were in the thousands, now they're in the tens and elevens around there. Interesting, okay, so let's now copy and paste a summarized data. 
but let's connect this one to apply math operation. And it's going to do it just on that one and only column that came through on apply math operation. Let that run. All right, I left this one on result only because it's going to make it easier to, to see here in the summarized data. Okay, so here's my natural log of annual income. Let's scroll over to skewness and kurtosis. Will you check that out? Look at it. Skewness and kurtosis within plus or minus three, within plus or minus three. Now we can use that variable in a predictive model later on during in the modeling phase. This is one of the most important tasks right now during data preparation. Not every algorithm requires this assumption to be true. Not all of them depend on having skewness and kurtosis within plus or minus three. So if this doesn't work and you can't find a mathematical operation that gets it within those boundaries, that's okay. Don't eliminate the variable, but you better flag it and make sure that we keep track of and note in your reports. Well, what reports? Don't forget back here in the uh, in the crisp um, framework. Some of our reports is the data cleaning report, the derived attributes list, um, and back in the data understanding phase, we have some places where you would flag potential problem problematic data. So we're keeping track of these things, but we can still include it and send it on. We don't have to stop the whole project because we couldn't get skewness and kurtosis within plus or minus three. But you can see this is an example of feature engineering, creating a new field uh, to improve our ability to predict later on. So this class, I, won't, I don't have time to go into all the many different types or things that you, or ways that you might transform something. This would be a good thing to learn though, um, is simply exploring what are all the different ways I can transform numeric data to get it to be normal or, or fit a bell curve. All right, um, back to apply math operation. We've got some other modes here. The one I prefer the most is append. Uh, and the reason why is that I need all my data to come through. So I also want to keep the original income uh, column uh, because, like I said, I might use an algorithm later on that doesn't care that the data is not normalized or distributed along a bell curve. In a histogram and so I always err on the side of let's keep it and let the modelers or when we do the modeling let's determine then whether or not or which one we want to use so just so you can see a visualization this includes everything let's find annual income right there and somewhere maybe at the very end it's going to include there it is the natural log of annual income as well all right that's apply math operation one more let's keep going let's move this over here I'll move this out of the way over there. Eh, it's getting messy, that's all right. One more I want to show you back here is the edit metadata pill. All right, I've got the perfect one. Remember back when I was, uh, we were messing with the bike buyer's data and some of my, um, when I was doing the split data, my, um, gender numeric or my homeowner numeric fields that were 0, 1 weren't being treated as numbers. They look like numbers, but they're being treated as text. Sometimes you have to go in and specify whether a field is a text or a number, and edit metadata is a useful way to do that. So I'm going to pull this out. Um, we'll still just do this off the, oops, off the Lending Club data since we're already on this data. All right, let's launch a column selector. Uh, sometimes I do this, especially with a dependent variable to make sure that, for example, loan status numeric is being recognized as a number. Uh, every once in a while, it just, depending on how it was stored in the database, I can have a, a database field that it looks like it's all numbers, you know, zero through whatever. However, the database type for that field was set to be text. You can store numbers in a text field. You can't store text in a number field. So if that happens, um, when I pull it here into Azure, it might think that my numeric fields are actually text. So what I would do is come in here and say, okay, anything that I think should be numeric, just to be safe, let me grab all of it. I'm not gonna grab all of them right now, but put them on this side of selected columns, check the box. And I can come here and say, okay, data type, we wanna change to what? An integer. That means a number, uh, number with no uh, decimals. This is another way to round as well. I can say uh, treat something. If I want to eliminate decimals, 
I believe I can come here and take something that's already a float, which means it's got decimals, and say make it an integer, and it will round. So uh, I can also take a number. I can do the opposite. I can take a numeric field and say make it categorical, or uh, take an, another way to make take a number field. I don't want to convert it to an integer. I also don't want to convert it to a float. I don't want to convert the number format at all. I don't want to change the number of decimal places, but I want to make it non-categorical. I can use that. Um, fields, uh, when we get into data mining, we sometimes, um, it, it becomes useful to specify whether a, f a column is what we call a feature or a label. So a label is the same thing as a dependent variable. It's what we want to predict, and there's usually just one of those. Features are everything else, everything we use to predict labels. So I can come here and I can mark it as one of those. I'm not going to get into the rest of these right now. I think this covers the breadth of most things we want to do. Um, I'm not even going to give it a new column name. I can just simply run this, and the output of this edit metadata field now is that um, that field loan status numeric has been forced to become an integer, and that's it. So most of the value here uh, for you is going to be in the supply math operation field. Sometimes it's useful to use edit metadata in case when our data came in, like I said, the database specified uh, something as the wrong data type. This is a useful field. I almost never use this one in practice in Azure. I use it in Python when I'm running from code, but not in Azure. But I use this one a lot when it comes to feature engineering. Um, so that's it for data transformation.